fantastic. Um, good day, everyone. Thank you for giving us again the opportunity to share our perspective on how our security landscape will definitely change and more than that, transform for 2020. Um, as we all, we are aware, our world is really getting bigger. Um, just wanna make sure the slides are moving. There you go. There you go, fantastic. Um, as I was saying, when we take a look at uh, our world today as individuals who work in the field of IT and security and digital consumers ourselves, we all know that the power of technology and connectivity in the world that we live in is far different today than yesterday. We also recognize the fact that when we look at digital transformation, um, when we look at digital transformation, for instance, when we look at the smart homes that live with today, it is so connected to the smart cities that where we digitally navigate our lives day to day. And more than anything else, the smart infrastructure begin to become a strong backbone for us. So I think you will agree with me when I say this big and bold statement that our world today is getting bigger, but very much more reachable. But the challenge is, is it actually smarter? So today, my goal together with Mitchell is to help you understand how all of this digital transformation will actually help us, but also as we navigate, what are the threats that we would like to see for this year? So hyperconnectivity is definitely our no boundaries. There are about an estimated 11 million devices that are hyperconnected, um, and and that gives us really the power to be able to be reachable and also very um, omnipresent. Pretty much, we can be anywhere and everywhere, whenever we mandate to. So when we look at all of these devices today. The question that we do have is how is our world changing when boundaries are no longer mandated? When we look at um, um, all of the cybersecurity risks and threats, there is no different. There are two things that are very pronounced. One is the fact that old tricks are still coming in the way, but also new tricks are being invented as we become more modern and as we become more advanced. So as I repeated earlier, my goal today is to share with you what Trent Micro will see for 2020. And hopefully, this digital disruptors, it can hopefully give you a, what I call a compass. So hopefully you can navigate better uh, as we move forward. So one of the biggest predictions that we're making this year is that the world is far complex. When I say complex, you look at the landscape that we live in today. There is a wide variety of applications, services, platform, and all of them are intertwined by design and all require massive protection. When we look at also the increase of migration to the cloud, this gives businesses like you and my business agility. So the challenges, that come in the way as we move to cloud is a misconfiguration that contributes to the possibility of what we call exponential compromise. So overall, the inevitable connected assets and the infrastructure that creates an open door, it also provides an open door to more threats. And that is why we feel that 2020 is more complex. In the following slides, we have purposely picked a couple of 
digital threats that we think are more relevant to the um, audience today, pretty much on a small, medium businesses, without saying that this will not also exist to large enterprises or bigger infrastructure. So let's begin and talk a little bit about them. So one of the things that we're looking at really is what we always say, the race between the cyber defenders less versus the attackers. We all know that the issue on vulnerability management and monitoring is a challenge that cuts across from either big enterprises to small businesses to even medium businesses. I think you all sing the same song when we talk about vulnerability is one of the biggest challenges that we face today. True enough, when we look at vulnerability today, uh, from our study last year, there is a massive increase of about 20% vulnerability that we have not seen in the past. So attackers are now given what I call an open window uh, or a window of opportunity to attack our infrastructure. And I'm not talking about the inability to patch a system. The three areas where we think uh, where attackers will outpace us when it comes to uh, vulnerability management is number one is the quality of patch, not necessarily the time to patch. We all know that the ability to patch requires massive resources. We have seen um, applications that are not providing the complete patch um, uh, resolution. So we have to be careful with that because this gives an entryway to a lot of the attackers to break in. One of the issues that we also see in vulnerability management is what we call patch bypass. This is a term when there is sufficient quality of um, codes that are made available into the, uh, into the solution. So therefore, exploit can come in by just changing a couple of lines or by passing some of the codes. So this is a critical item, especially for big in enterprise uh, applications. And the third is, seems to be a new term um, that is being introduced, but it's actually an old practice called patch gaping. So patch gaping, is again another entryway that we would like to see. So this is this is usually happens when the time to patch is available, but the inability to apply these patches downstream to the many products and applications you have becomes a problem. So the more patches uh, you have to employ, the more vulnerable you get, right? And that's why virtual patching comes to play um, when it comes to this kind of attacks. So for this one major threat, the point I'd like to make is, is it truly punctuates the fact that vulnerability management is a continuous activity. It requires significant time, attention, and resources. However, it is non-negotiable. We have to do it as organizations. Um, the second area that I'd like to talk about is on the area of banking um, and mobile. According to a third party study in the US this year, the number of US mobile payment increases by 9%. And that was last year. This year, there is a projection that that number will double. And we're talking about approximately about 30% of the smartphone users of US are really employing smart payments um, and dependencies on this tool. So this is good. This is um, one of the gates of this uh, modernization is really regulations. The regulations that will make it easier to transact via these devices, but sometimes it's not necessarily mean easy means safe. Take for example, what we call the revised regulation PSD2, which is a European regulations, and hopefully in some countries they will um, employ this. So what will this bring us is what we call an open banking system. Again, an area where a lot of uh, FSI are welcoming it because it's good for the business. However, in our point of view, when this is adopted, attackers will also take advantage of what I call earlier of the old tricks that had worked in the past. 
So three big areas that we want you to be aware of when we're doing this. Number one is the fact that mobile malware will continue to target online banking system. And in the graph that you see on the left side, there is no longer a conduit or there is already already a conduit between the user and the bank called fintech, right? So this again will be a wider space for them to attack. Second, as we have a conduit between the bank and the users, flaws on what we call API attacks uh, would likely emerge that will connect around the ecosystem. And the third is we've seen a downfall or a downtrend on what we call ATM malware attack for the last three years. But because of this open banking system, highly likely we will see the resurgence of what we call online and physical ATM malware attack. So this is, an, again, an area where a layered protection should be applied, not just on your own peripheral, but also on the various systems um, and ecosystems as this ecosystem shifts. The next big one is quite controversial. Um, two years ago, in one of our prediction, we talked about the advanced and modern uh, capability of what we call machine learning. Uh, let me push that back a little bit. So when we talk about machine learning, we're talking about advanced technology that we can use in our business that will become very beneficial, specifically on data and system security. However, one of the things that we also said is that attackers will also take advantage of this and put it to their um, intent and motive. And here comes the first form of attack called deep fake. So deep fake is something that we have to be concerned about because as uh, social media users, or we consume a lot of our information online, this is an opportunity where a lot of attackers would likely see a lot of uh, big opportunity this year. So what they're doing is that they're creating highly believable, quality counterfeited, either images, video, animated format. And again, this is all around playing around your psychology that you're actually talking to the individual. Um, say for instance, your boss, say for example, all your uh, relationship and connectedness that you have today. So this has become very concerning because they can counterfeit and fake not just the images, but even the sound. Right? A recent report actually, uh, a third party company um, whose CEO was victimized by these scammers fall prey to a lot of this deep fake um, attacks. So this will likely come in as the next BEC, or business email compromise targeting C-level or business owners, but again, it is not exclusive to them. So this, I think, is what we call the next wave of what we call digital extortion. So therefore, when the world is complex, we feel also because of the emergence of this new attacks, new practices in IT and OT, the world will become far more exposed. So the last two slides, we're talking about exposure. In the last webinar, we've talked about how IoT devices will be used by attackers. Again, I will reiterate on the fact that today they're using IoT devices as a way to create espionage campaign and extortion. So, which means it is part of a bigger campaign. If you think you're the only one looking at, for instance, your smart home cameras around, then you're wrong. So a lot of these devices have very flawed um, security practices that we need to be cognizant. So today, we would likely see what we call the next level of attack of IoT devices not just looking at you, listening to you, but using as the data to create what we call espionage or next level extortion. So this is something that we have to recognize and might be a gateway to the previous attack that I said about 
deep faith. Um, the other area that we're looking at is really, we've talked about the capability of working from almost anywhere, anytime, um, with the, what we call the offshore, uh, uh, offshore, offshore uh, work. So this is nothing new. Uh, people setting up um, their own work environment in almost everywhere, from a cafe, uh, from the beach, or even from a uh, We've talked about this, and you probably know this more than anything else. But one of the biggest things that we have to take a look at is that how much the network that they are running the most confidential, more classified information right now is highly protected or not. As we continue to merge personal data and business data, home offices are now becoming probably the next level of supply chain attack because they're no longer in the offices. There is a big growth of people working almost everywhere in the comforts of their home. So which means that the merger of home devices and known network where you plug in your um, gadgets and how the data is transmitted really becomes what we call the design enterprise attack for cyber criminals. So this is again, something we need to take a look at. So those are the four big areas that we feel will change really the dynamics for 2020. I will go quite fast on the other elements of their predictions, um, specifically on the new game changer where cyber criminals will go to as we talked about blockchain and critical infrastructure, like the critical infrastructure that are pretty much we are very reliant on, like grid power system, um, we will see a couple of them this year. Um, the other things that we will also look into is what we call the applications and the integration of the services and platform. The more that we will require more protection, because it's almost intertwined, and as I said, almost without boundary. And um, hopefully this moves <laughs> further. Um, and the last area we wanted to kind of share with you is that a large part of these predictions are actually printed. Um, it will be the last slide here. Um, there were a few more areas on how businesses like uh, verticals and banking, manufacturing, retail will be challenged this year. So we encourage you to download the report. It will be at the last part of the slide um, for the complete set. And again, what we always say that the world will be complex. It will be highly exposed. But the point is it will always be defensible. Meaning to say that it's not a matter of when the attack will come in, it's when the attack comes in, but how much knowledge and defenses do you have in your network and in your knowledge bank that will help protect you. So hopefully that gives you a better compass to navigate uh, 2020 with a lot of ease and peace of mind. Back to you, Daniel.